Also, as a leader, your responsibility is not to make everybody happy. If you and I try to answer every critic, and if we try to make everybody happy, we're not going to be a very effective leader because we're going to spend all of our time doing that. And let me give you a little clue. You're still not going to be successful. Even if you work 24-7 on trying to make everybody happy, the Tobias and the Gishams and the Sand Ballots, you're not going to succeed. So you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that at all. Our job is to do exactly what God called us to do. I guess the most profound lesson about this kind of thing that I learned was from Dr. Charles Stanley. Several years ago, Dr. Stanley, who's pastor of First Baptist in Atlanta, was the president of Southern Baptist Convention. It was a really fiery time in the Southern Baptist Convention. A lot of controversy was going on. And Dr. Stanley was the president, and he was getting criticized from all quarters. I mean, people were just after him. In fact, one family sued him and was going to take him to court because they didn't like his leadership style. And Dr. Stanley didn't respond. He didn't say much about it publicly. And I remember somebody asked him, why don't you talk about this? Why don't you say more about this battle that's going on? Why don't you talk about these people that are suing you when the Bible plainly says that we ought to be able to settle our disputes among ourselves, 1 Corinthians? Why don't you talk more about that? He said, that's not my job. He said, my job is to preach. My job is to lead the Southern Baptist Convention. It's up to God to take care of the rest. One of the greatest things you and I can do is to learn where our responsibility stops and God's begins. Sometimes you just have to say, God, I put it in your hands. You know, no matter what I say, it's not going to straighten the situation out. I can explain to the cows come home to Chick-fil-A. But I want you to understand, dear Lord, that it's not going to help one thing. So I just put it in your hands. There are some things you just got to surrender to God. Now, somebody might say, well, I appreciate the leadership lesson this morning, Brother Buddy, from King David, but I'm not a leader. I'm not a CEO. I'm not a manager. I'm not a supervisor. But yes, you are. You know what leadership really is? Leadership is influence. John Maxwell taught me that, that leadership is influence. And everybody here is influencing somebody, somewhere, somehow. So you are a leader. Are you a parent? You're a leader. Are you a grandparent? You're a leader. Are you a Sunday school teacher? You're a leader. Do you work with the public? You are a leader because your actions and your attitudes are influencing somebody else. That qualifies you as a leader. Now, the only question is, are you taking responsibility seriously wherever you're leading? So that when you're long gone, because we're living like we're dying, well, people say, man, up to the very last, they took their responsibility seriously. They were responsible with a capital R. And boy, they were a good leader. I mean, they stuck with the stuff through thick and thin. Or will they say, nope, he was a quitter. She was a quitter. It got tough. And they ran home and hid. What kind of leader are you? Two things this morning. Number one, David said there's one step between me and death. That's true for you. And that's true for me. And because there's only one step, the next step could be our last step. That's why it's so important that we know Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. If you've never embraced Jesus in your life personally, you may know about him, but if you don't know him, would you come and say, I want to embrace Jesus Christ? I want him to be my Lord and Savior. I believe in what he did on the cross 2,000 years ago, and I believe he did that for me, and I want to be my Lord and Savior. And take me to heaven when he comes back again or when it's my time to leave this earth. I want to know Christ. We can explain that to you. We'll pray with you. We'll give you literature. We'll help you in every way that we possibly can so that you can leave here with the assurance that you know, that you know, that you know that you belong to Jesus. Here's number two, the second issue. How are people going to remember your leadership, i.e., your influence? How are they going to remember that long after you're gone? We're building a legacy right now. Every day with everything we do, we're building our legacy. And one day when we're gone, we're going to leave behind memories. How are people going to remember you as a leader, as an influencer, in your circle of influence? It's something to think about. 
Maybe you need to come today and say, Lord, I really want to be a good leader. I want folks to remember me that way. I want to be a good influencer for your glory and praise, just like Nehemiah, just like King David. I want to be that kind of an influencer, that kind of a leader. Would you come? And if you'd like to join our church this morning, we certainly welcome you to come. We'll embrace you as a new member of our church, and we'll rejoice with you in your decision. Would you stand with me? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, thank you for these amazing true stories of tremendous leadership under pressure. And Father, I know there are many, many in this congregation under pressure right now. And perhaps only you know, Father, what they're really going through. The trials, the difficulties, maybe the character assassinations or just the enmity, Father, the misunderstanding. And Lord, I pray that you'd encourage them today. I pray that, Lord, we can learn some lessons about restraint and respectability and also responsibility. Father, bless this altar call. Use it for your glory and yours alone. And we'll give you all praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen.